The Sega Dreamcast featured an absolute ton of fighting games, but not only that, those fighting games are among some of the greatest of all time, but what were the best fighting games on the Sega Dreamcast? I'm Dan the Mega Driver and I'm here to answer that question. In part 1, we looked at the fighting games I ranked from 12 to 7 on the Dreamcast. Here in part 2, we're looking at the absolute cream of the crop, the greatest punching simulators of all time on Sega's White Wonder. So strap in, choose your ism, and select your assist type as we take you on a ride through the stage of history in The Greatest Fighting Games on Sega Dreamcast, Part 2. At number 6, it's the King of Fighters Dream Match 1999. This game derived from the King of Fighters 98, which launched in arcades in 1998 and was subtitled The Slugfest. It was an instant hit when it landed in arcades, representing a greatest hits of sorts with the largest roster the series had yet seen. The King of Fighters series was already an SNK all-star fighting franchise, so this game was kind of a best of of the best ofs. The Dreamcast port titled Dream Match 1999 gave the game a facelift with the 2D backgrounds upgraded with polygonal ones and the effect isn't as jarring as say Marvel vs Capcom 2 and in fact the shading on the backgrounds blends so well with the 2D sprites over the top that you can barely even notice. For me, I'm a huge fan of the King of Fighters series and 98 is my all time favourite. It manages to take and blend everything that was sensational about the preceding four games and in my opinion manages to play better than all of the preceding and subsequent titles, perhaps with the exception of the King of Fighters 13. For me, this is SNK at their absolute peak in their original form. Obviously, we can't ignore the fact that Ultimate Match upgrades do exist and came later with a lot of improvements, but Dream Match 1999 is arguably the best way to enjoy this classic with the original roster and gameplay intact. Street Fighter is back again for number 5 with Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. Easily regarded as one of the greatest fighting games of all time, Street Fighter 3 looks absolutely stunning with a depth of gameplay that few other games can rival. Though released to little fanfare originally, this game rose in popularity throughout the years with a constant presence in fighting game tournaments where Evo Moment 37 catapulted both it and fighting game tournaments in general into the mainstream. With an absolutely amazing roster and soundtrack, this would top the list on near any system. However, the Dreamcast port itself is fairly bare bones, as most releases of Street Fighter 3 are, but also features numerous changes to the gameplay from the arcade original. Now, personally, I actually prefer the Dreamcast gameplay to a degree, but it has proven to be a significant drawback for many, especially those that are in the tournament scene. More arcade accurate versions do exist, but don't let that detract from an all-time great that plays somewhat uniquely on Sega's Dreamcast. Marvel vs Capcom, Capcom 2 comes in at number 4 on this list. Some people would say it's the best game on the Sega Dreamcast and it's easy to see why. For many, it's the pinnacle of the Versus series, with a roster of over 50 characters, absurd screen-filling super moves, and absolutely spectacular combos. Not only was the game a joy to play, but the unlockable roster on the Sega Dreamcast gave it substantial longevity as you played through the game to unlock absolutely everything. Everyone knows how good this game is, even Michael B. Jordan. So why isn't it number one? Well, for me, it's too chaotic while simplifying way too much of the gameplay. Moving command team moves to a two button press feels like a step back for me, as did reducing the attack buttons to four. Also consider the disappointing final boss, jarring 3D backgrounds, weird stage music and a deeply imbalanced roster, and despite the game's size and popularity, it isn't perfect. But it is still an incredible fighting game, one of the greatest of all time, absolutely no question, which is why it is so high up on this list. Marvel vs Capcom 2 is an icon and remains one of the most enjoyable, 
popular and spectacular fighting games ever made for players of all levels. But if it not being number one does annoy you a little bit, just wait until you see the game directly above it. Number three for me is Marvel vs. Capcom Clash of Superheroes. I absolutely adore pretty much everything about this game. In my mind, it is the best versus fighting game next to the original X-Men vs. Street Fighter. This game is pure classic six button Capcom fighting action. The roster feels like a near perfect mix of old and new for the series with Venom and Mega Man being particular highlights. The smaller roster means that no one is lost in the rabble and the fighters are more balanced as a result. Consider what I feel are the weaker points of the sequel. The final boss here is the monstrous and iconic onslaught from the Marvel Universe. The backgrounds are beautiful and give the game a pure comic book feel with beautifully styled environments and characters that feel right at home in this setting. The music is absolutely incredible, featuring a wealth of remix classic tunes from across Capcom's games and new tunes that fit the game perfectly. But most importantly for me, this is one of the finest playing 2D fighting games ever created, adhering to that classic six button setup that gives players complete control over everything, from their players smallest attacks to the giant variable combinations that blow characters away at the end. If it wasn't for the random assist selection, this game would be absolutely perfect. But as it is, for me personally, this is one of the greatest fighting games of all time. And if you love Marvel vs Capcom but haven't played this yet, do yourself a favour and dig it out because you will not be disappointed. Capcom. Our runner-up is Capcom vs SNK2 Millionaire Fighting 2001. Now when it comes to crossovers, for me, one game is absolutely king, and that is Capcom vs SNK2. Absolutely worthy of representing two of the biggest fighting powerhouses at their peak, Capcom vs SNK2 jettisons the four-button SNK style setup in the first crossover and expands the roster enormously beyond the corking of Fighters 94 and Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo characters from the first game and it brings in fighters from across both companies. You've got additions like Homaru, Eagle from the first Street Fighter, Mackie from Final Fight 2 and Rock Howard from Mark of the Wolves. Then you've got six fighting styles with the three Alpha 3 isms on the Capcom side and the King of Fighters 94, 97 and Samurai Showdown styles on the SNK side. Throw in some epic final boss battles and a superb soundtrack alongside so many match types, a colour edit mode and online gameplay and it is easily one of the most comprehensive fighting games of all time and it plays absolutely superbly. Even the 3D backgrounds mix well with the 2D sprites. Since a third game in the clash between the two kings of 2D fighters never materialised, we're left with this as the final swung song. But what a send off it is. Perhaps even the pinnacle of 2D fighting games in the 90s. You can almost see the higher watermark where the wave broke and rolled back. In my opinion, it's pretty much perfect. At number one, what else could it be but Soul Calibur? Now, I'm a 2D fighting game fan at heart, and when it comes to 3D, Virtua Fighter is king for me. And that's why Soul Calibur being number one is such a big deal. This was the game that sold Western gamers on the Sega Dreamcast. The game that took Virtua Fighter 3's place as the visual benchmark for the genre. The title that effectively killed the arcade scene overnight as graphics on consoles had finally surpassed arcade originals. But it's not just looks. Soul Calibur plays like a dream too, improving on the fun but flawed original in every way, while doubling its frame rate from a near unacceptable 30 to a beautiful locked 60. The eight way run mechanic truly embraces the third dimension, and while not as precise as that of Virtua Fighter 3, it was far more versatile. But that wasn't the only mechanic. 
with parries, guard impacts and many more making battles not only impressive looking but deep tactical affairs. The game has a decent sized roster which is unlocked as you play and that is bolstered by perhaps the most complete set of game modes in any fighting game. Amongst the plethora of options is the mission mode which many gamers lost so many hours on, myself included. Soul Calibur is a success on almost every level, far exceeding its prequel, its arcade original and even Sega's own blockbuster franchise. What's more, Soul Calibur is very much a product of its time. There's no DLC fighters, no DLC modes, no reliance on guest fighters or creator characters, just pure, classic, arcade fighting action that arguably we haven't seen since and likely won't see again. Not only is Soul Calibur the best fighting game on Dreamcast, it's one of the greatest fighting games of all time. So there we have it, those are the greatest fighting games of all time on the Sega Dreamcast, according to me, Dan the Mecha Driver. We'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on the best fighters on Dreamcast or any other Sega console for that matter. If you've enjoyed this content, please give us a like or a subscribe. And if you want to be extra mega, you can support us by becoming a member, which comes with a host of perks and benefits and starts from just 99p. But thank you for making it to the end of this video regardless of any of that. And we hope that you'll stop by again soon. And until then, we will see you on the Sega side.